Hi everybody, I'm Molly Ann Lakin, Rhymes with Bacon. I'm a hit songwriter, a songwriting consultant, marketeer, and I've written themes and songs for over 50 TV shows and movies, including Violet that won an Oscar. I'm an Emmy nominee, and my songs have been recorded by everybody from Placido Domingo to Cher, Tina Turner, Glenn Campbell, Billy Preston, even Yitzi Yaya and the Yo-Yos. I've been in the music business all my adult life, and I've learned a great deal from being in the trenches every single day, and it's my pleasure to pass that information along to you in this video. In addition to marketing my own songs, I have a remarkable track record in helping my clients to market their material. So far, 12 of them are Grammy winners, 16 more are Grammy nominees, and so far, with my help, 7,505 other writers and artists just like you have placed their work in movies and TV shows, on CDs, in video games, commercials, and their tracks are downloaded all over the web. A song has actually three main important essential parts. First is the lyric, then there's the melody, then there's the rhythm. That's three distinct sections. I have thousands of clients who come to me and say they write lyrics only and they're looking for people to write music for their lyrics. Well, I'm going to spend some time today talking to that segment out there because it's really important for you to understand that if you got the words, the melody might be in there somewhere too. So what I suggest you do is take a line from one of your songs. Let's say it's the title line and the first line of your chorus. And say the title of your song is how to write a hit song. So it could be, the rhythm could be how to write a hit song. Okay, nothing really spectacular, but how to write a hit song. Now, what if you change the rhythm a little bit and made it how to write a hit song? That's a lot more interesting. How to write a hit song. Or you could make it even more interesting by how to, how to write a hit, hit, hit song. And I'm repeating a lot, but when you repeat, it makes it a lot more interesting and a lot more fun to, to um, hear and often to dance to. So let's say your how to write a hit song is now how, 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 how to write a hit, hit, hit song. You've got all that interesting rhythm going and that repetition going. And when you hear the rhythm, then the rhythm suggests the individual notes of the melody. So all of you out there who say, I only write lyrics, and by the way, you should proudly say, I write lyrics instead of I only write lyrics. Try to add interesting rhythm to the words you've already written and see how interesting it sounds. And just as I did now, just say the words in that rhythm pattern and record everything because you never know when the miracle is going to pop up. So will you try that for me? I always start writing a song by writing the chorus melody. The chorus is the strongest part of your song and it's the part that we remember after hearing a song once. So we're driving down the freeway, it's all traffic 24 seven. You're getting mad at the guy ahead of you who's got blue smoke billowing. There's a baby in the next car screaming and there's a guy over here who's got some rap going and he doesn't know 
anything but loud. So you're sitting there and you are going to lose it, but you're going to write your song on the freeway. And you're going to take your how to write a, write a, write a hit song and record it into something that you can keep and listen back to. What I do is I write the notes, I write the rhythm, and I, by writing I mean I, I record what I hear in my head. I don't write notation. And I listen back to it. I, I tweak it again, I record it again, I listen back, tweak, record, tweak, record, over and over and over till it's just right. And when it is, something in my gut tells me, aha, you got a great melody. Now you can do that too. So don't walk around saying, I only write lyrics. First you want to say, I write lyrics, and then try to come up with the rhythm. And when you've got the rhythm, it's going to make you feel a lot more powerful. And when you do hook up with a composer, and I do this all the time, I have thousands of great lyricists that I've hooked up with wonderful composers and bands. Then the two of you can sit together and write a song together that's got some real rhythm to it and that's going to make it a lot easier to market. The songs that say how to write a hit song, da 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 so strong, I am gonna all nong, oh da do da bored to death. So you want to vary that rhythm all the time. Now I'm going to give you some other tricks that I use and my colleagues who are hit song writers use all the time. Most people are taught that any section of the song, whether it's the verse, the chorus, or the bridge, has to have eight bars. Eight bars, eight bars, eight bars, eight bars. But that all went out the window with the Beatles. Back in the day, if you were a student of composition at a music academy, the, t the teacher would walk around with a ruler and whack your hands if you dare to have anything but eight bars, eight bars, eight bars, eight bars. Nowadays, you can have any number of bars you want. I strongly suggest that you make it an uneven number. So let's say your chorus has seven and a half bars or seven bars, or it's a short chorus that repeats and it has three bars here and two bars there. Vary it and make it interesting. You don't want predictable. That's the death of art in any medium. I also, by varying the number of bars, I also vary the number of lines. So a lot of people s seem to think that you need four lines, four lines, four lines, four lines. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. So I highly recommend that you vary the number of lines in a section and vary the number of syllables in each line. So maybe there's a five line chorus instead of four, and maybe the first line of that five line section has seven syllables, and the next line has three, and the next line has six, the next line has seven, and the next line has two. Well, hey, well, how am I going to say anything with so few notes? You know what? You can do it. You can do it. It's discipline. You can do it. So vary the number of lines, the number of syllables in a line, and you're going to have all this rhythm going, and all that rhythm is going to suggest melodies. A good song tells a good story, and by definition, a story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It also answers the five W's, who, where, what, and when, why, plus how. You watch the news, you read a newspaper story, you read a magazine, every single one of those stories follows the guidelines I just gave you. A lot of songwriters start off great, they've got a great opening line, but then they spend the rest of the lyric repeating what they've already said or saying it in a different way. You want to start at zero. You want to slowly move along the highway and take a left turn here 
and a right turn there and go up the mountain and down the valley and oh my god there's a river that you can't cross you know what keep on going right through the water blast right through it have some guts take your hand off the wheel just let it rip tell that story and don't be afraid to go outside the lines when you're telling that story and the same is true for music you don't want to just keep going along the same road da 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 so what we know what's coming you always want to surprise your audience it's the same thing as sitting down in a movie theater and bam right at the beginning of the movie something has to happen boom to catch our attention and in two minutes later something else has to happen and at 10 minutes something else happens i've studied song uh, screenwriting and i've sold a lot of scripts and i've taken classes from some wonderful people like sid field and all those incidents are built into the story well the same thing should be built into your melody and that every few bars something new happens I don't mean changing keys. Let's say you're writing in the key of C, which is my favorite because it doesn't have any sharps or flats. And it's right there on the keyboard. So instead of how, uh, instead of how to write a hit song, you've got the rhythm, how, 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 how to write a hit song, hit song, boo, do, do. And the next line might be, I know what to do, what to do, baby, baby, how to write a hit song, hit song, and then I will, will you. So that's the rhythm. I'm not really singing a melody, um, but I just want you to see how to set it up with surprises. So every few bars you want to change the melody and you want to go places in your melody that people are not expecting to go. Your job as a melody writer is to take your audience out of themselves and onto an adventure. Same thing with movies. You don't want to have the same old, same old, same old, same old stuff happening because A, why would you spend your 10 or $15 to go to the theater in the first place? You might as well stay home and just live your own life. So you, as an artist, have as your goal to transport your audience from where they are to where they want to be or think they'd like to be. There's a very famous scene in the movie called The Shape of Water, which won the Oscar. And the scene that melted everybody was when this monster from the water with claws and scales all over him is dancing with the woman who doesn't speak and who is pretty and beautiful wearing a lovely pink dress and he's holding her hand so gently and it's just the most beautiful love scene I've ever seen in a movie and completely unexpected. That's what your melodies have to do is make your audience dance and dream to get up from their kiosks in their offices, put down their pens, turn off their computers, and just dance. So that's what your job is, and I know you can do it. You have wonderful gifts, and I want you to honor them. But don't think you're going to sit down the first time out, and that boom, you're going to have a great melody. Everything you do is great, but the first draft is the first draft. So keep it and listen back and think, boy, I really love that third line. Okay, keep the third line, change the other ones around it. So a, a work of art is a work in progress. And just like I said about the lyrics, you'll know in your gut when the melody is finished. And once the melody is finished, then what I do is add the chords. I haven't mentioned anything about chords in the creation of the melodies we're discussing. Notes first, individual notes. 
and then add the chords. And I bet you see some incredible improvement. Please let me know when you do. I hope you noticed that we've been discussing this and I haven't been at the keyboard yet. And I want you to think that you can hear things in your head that are valuable when you're not sitting at a keyboard or holding your guitar. Your imagination works 24 seven and it never stops. You'll notice that when you're on a roll and you're creating something, the ideas usually show up around one in the morning and forget about getting a night's sleep. But honestly, that's the best feeling in the world. Oh my God. Oh my God. I have an idea. I got to write it down. And you're at the market and you don't have a paper, you don't have your phone or something and you, Oh my God. Oh my God. And so you borrow a pen from somebody and write it on the egg carton, or you even write it on your arm. So you remember it when you get home, but you don't have to be at an instrument to write. If you trust your imagination, the only thing I do insist on is that the minute you get to some kind of recording device that you record it. So it's there. The minute you say, Oh, I'll do it. When I get home, you get home and it's going to be gone. Ideas are very powerful and also very sensitive. And if you don't value them, when they come into your head, they get mad and go into somebody else's head. And guess what? A week later, you hear the song on the radio and you say, but, but that's mine. That's my song. Well, yeah, it was, but you didn't, respect it. So it went into somebody else's head. I had a meeting this week with a guy who claims that he wrote the song looking for love in all the wrong places that he wrote the melody and the words and that his manager somehow got it through a circuitous route to get to Nashville and it became a huge hit and still is fun to listen to. But he didn't honor it enough to do the paperwork or follow the paper trail with his manager to see what was going to happen with the song. And that's on him. So he's going to go through his whole life saying, I wrote that song and I didn't get credit for it. And one of the reasons why is because he didn't honor it. He didn't have the wherewithal in his, in his mindset to go file a copyright and to make a non-disclosure agreement with everybody he met along the way. Songs are very precious in our business. They are our currency. Don't grumble about the ones that got away. Use the strength of knowing, Hey, if I did it once I can do it again. And every day I want you to write something down. I don't care whether it's a letter to the landlord. I don't care if it's a letter to a Southern California reminding them that if their grid hadn't sparked, we wouldn't have had any of those fires or any of that mud, whatever it is. If it's just something silly, I need to write, I need to write something silly, silly, silly today. It's instead of, I need to write something silly today, mix it up. It's fun. S save it, save it, save it. And please save it somewhere other than your phone because we know what happens to phones. Okay. Honor what you do, treasure what you do and mix it up and honor the time that you're not at your keyboard or at your guitar or at your zither. Then when you've got these ideas going in your head, then I want you to go to the keyboard or the guitar and find the rest of it. Okay. Will you try that for me? It works. I love to play my keyboard and it's very logical to take the notes from your head and translate them into the keys on the keyboard. The keys are all right here. They're just all spread out. Now the range that most people who are singers can handle is an octave and three. That's that's it. Not up here. 
not up here, but here. So here's middle C. See those two black notes? Here's C, and here's C an octave above it, and here's a major third up from there. There you are. Ideally, when you create a new song, the verse range is somewhere down here, and the chorus moves up until the highest note in the song is here. So the lowest note here, the highest note here. And you say, well, my God, everybody's written all the original melodies. Well, you know what? That's not true because there are endless combinations of notes. So forget about what other people have done and just listen to your heart and write what's in your heart. But keep it in a range that's singable from C to C to E. That's it. Verse down here, slowly moving up to the chorus and the highest note of the chorus, which ideally is in the first line of the song and nowhere else is right here. I used to write with somebody who was way up here, and I and he he wrote symphonies, and I said, "Hey, pal, <laughs> we're in rock and roll. We're down here." Well, I know singers who can sing, yeah, but most of them can't, and this went on for years. Finally, there was one song we wrote called an American hymn, and the range was oh, I don't know, it was mighty might have been up here. Well, we can get uh, an opera singer. I said, yeah, but how many CDs does an opera singer sell? So after about 10 years, finally, I convinced him to stay there. And it worked, and we've got, gotten all kinds, of, uh, all kinds of records, all kinds of recordings, all kinds of performances. As with anything else in songwriting, the final product should be easy for the singer to sing. It's like driving along Wilshire Boulevard in LA and seeing a gorgeous gown in the window at Neiman Marcus. And you look at it and think, oh my God, I have to have that, I have to have that dress. And the dress in the window is size two, and you may be a size 10 or a 12, but you think you're gonna look like a size two when you wear that gown. The same thing with a song. A singer hears it and he thinks, wow, I'm gonna sound magnificent. All my best notes will be in that song. I won't be screeching for anything up here and I won't be digging for anything down here. Here we are. Try it, it works. So for lyricists who claim they don't write music, that they can't write melodies, don't be intimidated by your musicianship or your lack of ability to play an instrument. Hear it in your head and honor that. And then go digging for the melody here. What is this melody? Da 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 do. And you're recording everything. So if you get lucky, it's there. It's recorded. Trust me, you won't remember it. Record it. So the, the keyboard is your friend. And if you can just pick out the individual notes or even sing them la 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 and record them, you can use a, a musical secretary who can help you find the chords. That's make, that makes your song full and wonderful and get a really strong contemporary sound. So it's not just you, it's you and your team. And you can do it. Now, if you're used to writing on a keyboard or on a guitar or on any other instrument for that matter, and you really are a world-class musician and you're used to playing all kinds of fancy chords and riffs and so on, that's great, but you might strip down to the bare bones of the song, which is the melody, and that by definition, a melody is a series of single notes with rhythm. So the least 
complicated you can make it, the better in the initial stages. Then when you've got the melody and you've got your individual notes and you've got your good strong hook chorus, then you can go to the keyboard and find all the gnarly chords that you want. But start simple. I know it works. And let me know how you do. When you finish the verse and you're going up into the chorus, you want to make sure that the rhythm changes dramatically. So if you're playing da 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 in your verse, da 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 da, then when you get to the chorus, you don't want da 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 da. You want to go up a major third, which is from here to here, and you want the rhythm to change. So after da 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 uh uh ba uh 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 see how different that is from da 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 now i can say that a lot better than i can play that but that doesn't matter i still created it and with the help of a musical secretary who can help you find the chords and someone who can really play the keyboard, which is probably the same person, you can write great melodies. So try it and let me know how you do. Whether you write music only, words only, or music and lyrics, whether you play an instrument, whether you sing, no matter what, your most important job every day is to listen to a contemporary music station for at least an hour. Well, I gotta go to work. Well, I gotta do this. I pick up the game. The car has a radio. Listen to your favorite station. And I don't mean oldies but goodies because you can't have an oldie but goodie until you've had a golden hit in the present tense. So listen to what's on the air now and I mean on all media, and get familiar with the acts and the bands and the artists who are looking for material, who are singing contemporary songs. And you say, wow, I got a song for Adele. I, hey, this is great. Blake Shelton, man, I, I, I'm going to do this. I love that song about the dogs. So be familiar with the marketplace. No matter what business you're in, it's important for you to be familiar with the marketplace. You wouldn't say one day, hey, I got this great idea for a shoe. Well, wouldn't you need to know what Mike, Nike and New Balance and Adidas were doing before you had a chance at marketing your new shoe? Same thing with songs. Listen to the radio. That is your best teacher. And suppose you like country songs, then listen to the new country songs. And by new country, I mean the contemporary ones, and listen to when they do the top 40 countdown. And so you know what's number one, you know who's singing it, you know who wrote it, who produced it, and what label it's on. Same thing with every single song on that chart, way down at the bottom, where number 100 is. Could be a new artist at, no, at number 100, and that person's going to be a lot easier to reach than the guy who's number one. Number one doesn't need you. Number 100 probably does. So be completely familiar with what's out there and what is successful and have your mindset so sharp and so focused that, hey, I'm going to write contemporary songs, whether it's pop, whether it's country, whether it's rock and roll, whether it's alternative, whether it's adult contemporary, no matter what it is, your job is to become completely conversant in who's on the charts, who's singing what, who wrote it, who produced it, and the label that it's on. That's your business. You don't just suddenly, well, one day, hey, I woke up, you know what? I'm going to be a doctor. Today I'm just going to get a little black bag and stick stuff in it that looks important, and I'm going to be a doctor. Well, that's ridiculous. You go to medical school forever. Same thing with songwriting school. 
You have to do it slowly and methodically so that you are completely familiar with how to construct a melody, what to do with the rhythm, and who is a realistic candidate for what you're creating. And that is very powerful. It gives you the courage to keep making those phone calls and sending those emails. And eventually, I know if you stay at it and you listen to your heart and you run your songs by me before you start peddling them anywhere, then you're going to have a career. It's easy to reach me. I have a toll-free number for the U.S. and Canada, and that number is 800-851-6588. You can reach me by email, songmd at songmd.com. You can go to my website, songmd.com, and see how beautiful it is and what a good job my new uh, web designer did. I'm in California, so re please remember not to call me in the middle of the night. But the rest of the time I'm here for you. I have so many successful clients and I'd love to include you as one of them soon. I have some learning tools that are fantastic and that I'm happy to offer you. The first is my book called How to Be a Hit Songwriter. It covers everything we've discussed this morning as well as lots of other things, the secrets of hit songwriting. And then I have another book, How to Write a Hit Song, which is in its fifth edition and is also fantastic. And to go with them, I produce Molly Ann Lakin's Master Class in Songwriting, which is a compilation of all the very best classes that I taught at UCLA. And with the books, this comprises a complete home study hit songwriting course. Thank you again. Write well, see on the charts, and be sure to let me know if I can help you with your songs in terms of a consultation for marketing and evaluation. You can reach me at my website, songmd at songmd.com, but please don't send me any unsolicited material because it'll be automatically deleted. Those of you in North America, that's Canada, U.S., and Mexico, you can call my 800 number, 800-851-6588. And try to reach me between 8.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, okay? You know you're good. You know you've got something special. You have a gift that you want to share with the world. I'm with you. I'm here for you. When you're ready to move forward and make your dreams come true, here I am.